As a photographer, I've traveled throughout Africa for the last several years. However, it wasn't until recently that I learned about the devastating impact of burns on young children and families. Interplast, which provides free reconstructive surgery for burn patients, told me that in Africa alone, nearly one million people, mainly children, suffer a severe and often disabling burn each year. So in 2008, I went to Zambia to learn more and to see what Interplast was doing to help. Most Zambians are very hardworking, yet more than half of them live on less than a dollar a day. They grow their own food, and since they have no electricity, they cook on open fires. What may not be obvious about Zambia, though, is that an unbelievable amount of children have lost parents to AIDS. Just imagine, children are the caretakers of other children here. Since open fires are a part of everyday life, it's no wonder that accidents happen. But what does this mean for the children of Zambia? There was only one plastic surgeon in all of Zambia, a country of 11 million. He partners with Interplast to treat burn patients. And I met with him to see if he could shed some light on the questions I had. Goran Jovic came from Serbia to Zambia in 1993 and took on the monumental task of treating the multitude of children who suffer from disabling burns. You got burned? Uh-huh, what should you do? Uh, playing with fire, eh? naughty boy. Eh? This boy's burn was relatively minor, but Goran regularly sees patients whose burns have gone untreated for years. Their injuries heal by themselves, creating a permanent tightening or a contracture of the skin. This limits basic abilities like bending an arm or even walking. Go and play, but not with fire. When you introduce yourself as a plastic surgeon, everybody thinks instantly about uh, complete uh, total makeover and cosmetic surgery. While here, everything is reconstructive surgery. Congenital anomalies to trauma, defects, uh, burns, consequences, all sort of uh, reconstructive uh, surgical challenges. And it was difficult at the beginning because I'm the only one in the country in reconstructive surgery. You have to try to uh, solve the problem that are not described in the books. You just have to do it. Burns can happen anywhere to anyone, but tragically almost all disabling burns happen to the world's poorest people who have little access to basic medical care. Zambia is a country the size of Texas, and most of Goran's patients live in remote villages that are hundreds of miles from the main hospital in Lusaka. Even though Goran and Interplast provide free reconstructive surgery for the poor, the long journey to the hospital can cost a family one or even two months' wages. Several years ago, Goran got his pilot's license so he could reach the thousands of patients that go untreated, and Interplast's burn surgical outreach program began. Interplast supports highly qualified surgeons like Goran, so the poor can have year-round access to the care they need to heal their bodies and reduce their disabilities. There's a time frame for reconstructive surgery and that the sooner people come, particularly after birth, the sooner the patient gets help to release the contracture, the better results. And that's why it is important to have an outreach program. Before I met Goran, I really didn't understand how a burn could completely change the course of a person's life. But when we took our first trip to this little hospital in the town of Kabwe, the reality of burns began to hit me. It was in Kabwe where I first met Mateo. When the body gets burned, 
it immediately reacts yeah, by trying good. to close the wound. If untreated, arms contract to the shoulders, legs bend permanently, chins get pinned to the chest. Children stop going to school because they can't use their hands to write. Mothers whose arms no longer bend can't pick up their babies, and fathers who can no longer walk lose their jobs, plunging a poor family deeper into poverty. Mateo is one of 10 children born into a very poor farming family. When he was five, he tripped and fell into an open cooking fire. His mother and father, both farmers, were working in the fields. His sister found him and dragged him out of the flames. He went untreated for two years. Victor, Mateo's 69-year-old father, is getting too old to work, which places more of a burden on Mary, his 45-year-old wife. Even though Goran now flies to a clinic near their home, deciding whether to go on with treatment was a very difficult choice for Mateo's parents. They were ecstatic to hear that Goran was there and could possibly help their son. But Mary will have to stay with him in the hospital for an entire week while he recovers. Because of her husband's age and poor health, Mary's nine remaining children will have to basically fend for themselves, and their meager crops will be neglected. Despite these pressures, Mary decided she couldn't pass up this opportunity for Matteo to have a productive life. Hi, Reconstructive surgery helps reduce physical limitations and restore function and hope. It can change the course of a child's life. This surgery will allow Mateo's spine and jaw to grow properly and allow his head to move freely. Mateo will need more surgeries for his hand as he grows. But at least now he has a second chance for a normal and productive life. During the surgery, I had a chance to talk to Matteo's mom. Mary told me that Matteo is very good with numbers and that he's one of her brightest children and he wants to be a banker. Unfortunately, because of his burn contracture, he's not been allowed to go to school. Mary says that she watches him in anguish as he hides his crippled hand when he goes to church. Burns are quite common in third world countries because we don't have electricity in the rural areas. Another issue is there are so many children and so few parents. Either their parents are working in the field or one or even both parents die because of AIDS or whatever reason, or they're just abandoned. And you can't blame the system, you can't blame the government or, or, or parents that they don't look after their, their family, their children. Far from there. The fact is that if you have a Burns contracture patient that is completely disabled, that patient is burdened to the family or to the society as long as they live. If the hand contracts in this position, what can you do? You can't grab anything, you can't unbutton yourself, you can't feed yourself. You just use it as a support, as a shovel or whatever, but it's useless. So that is person is constant burden to the family that have to work in the field, go to the market, work at the market. The sooner you operate, the better function and the result. They, they, they will look after themselves, and they will help family. Every individual that is touched by our service feels it tremendously. But impact of that individual is sometimes a matter of life and death. It's obvious that Mary cares deeply about her son. But I noticed that Mary seemed preoccupied as she waited in the recovery ward. I was imagining what was going on in her mind. I could see this mother's struggle between the relief of finally getting help for her son Yet knowing the week that she spends in the hospital will place a heavy burden on her and her family. I thought to myself, one day, Matteo the banker will fully understand his family's burden and how instrumental Goran and Interplast were in transforming his life and restoring his dreams. <laughs> <laughs>